Mina, come on, Jesus freaking gamer here, back with more Psalms, and I do apologize for not getting up all the videos that I should have gotten up. Um, I should have done technically two 30 minute messages, one Saturday and one Sunday. Only got one up Sunday, and so I missed. I actually missed an entire day of uploading again. Surprise, surprise, right? So, um, today, two Dark Souls videos, two preaching videos are going to be shorter. Plan on doing another 30 minute message later on this week to make up for Sunday yet again. I'm going to keep on plugging forward. So, here is today's second message coming out of Psalm chapter 5. A little bit of a controversial thing today, and something I'm not completely positive on, but. I'm here to dialogue with you guys. I'm here to share openly and honestly with you guys. So let's dive right in. It's Psalm chapter 5, and I'm going to start at verse 4. This is a Psalm of David. For you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness, nor shall evil dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand in your sight. You hate all workers of iniquity. You shall destroy those who speak falsehood. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. Now, I don't think if, if we had simply read verse 4 and um, verse 6 and 5a, I don't think we really, none of us would have had a problem with it. But it's, the, it's 5b, you hate all workers of iniquity. It's not that he hates their works or he's going to put down you know, proud people. It's like God actively hates the workers of iniquity. He doesn't hate their sin. He hate, it sounds like he hates the sinner. What does that mean? I am personally convinced that God loves everyone. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. That's very, very, very inclusive. That's pretty much everybody. No one's exempted from that statement. But then there's also the statement um, at some point in one of the minor prophets, I forget exactly which one, where it says, Jacob I have loved, Esau I have hated. What does that exactly mean? And the only thing that comes to my mind personally is that God knows everyone. He knows who's going to come to him and who's not. He knows who's going to repent and who's not. He knows those who will just continue to walk in their sin, continue to you know, shake their fist at him, who will continue to rebel, who will continue to agree with the devil and his ways. And since he knows they won't repent, that they will ignore his pleas um, to them to come to him and to be forgiven of their sin and to turn away from their sin, that God hates those people. Now, that would still leave us humans in a position of we don't know who's going to be saved ultimately and who's not. We don't know who you know is ultimately going to make it. So our job is to love everyone. And God does love everyone and wants to show everyone as many chances of mercy and love as he can. But he knows at the end of the day who's not going to repent. Does he hate those people? Well, that's the conclusion I come to. Those type of people, God does hate. He despises. Um, we know that he's going to see justice done. We know that he's going to put down proud, bloodthirsty men and women. We know that. But for a psalm to state so strongly, yeah, God hates those people. It's like, it's a bit of a curveball. And so I've given you my conclusion. What is your conclusion? I would really like to hear your thoughts on the matter. Again, I know God loves everyone because Jesus died for everyone. But it appears that there are some people that God hates. And my thought it is it's the people who will not repent and defy God to the very end. The people that choose to not believe. And God's like, okay, you choose not to believe, then I will destroy you. And that will, of course, ultimately result in hell forever. Very heavy subject, very harsh subject, but it's there. And I don't want to ignore the heavy subjects. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I love you. Uh, I don't hate you. It's not my job to judge. I love you. And God bless. Despite the fact that God knows who's going to repent. And as far as I'm concerned, until I hear otherwise, you are a candidate for repentance and you're a candidate to become a Christian. If someone like Saul could become Paul and write half the New Testament when he was breathing threats and murder against the church, you can be saved too. So I love you and God bless.